The first update on 2017 corn planting across the U.S. is expected Monday in the USDA's now weekly crop progress report. Once plants emerge, Peter Sycama says it's imperative farmers control weeds. Peter is a professor at the University of Guelph in Ridgetown, Ontario, about an hour and a half east of Detroit. Part of his research details corn yield losses from weed pressures during what he calls the critical period. Peter was on UNL's East Campus recently where we talked about management during that time frame, but we started by asking for a background of resistance issues across his country. So in terms of uh, herbicide resistance in Canada, it would have started in 1973 when the first triazine resistant weed was identified in the province. Uh, since then, we have about 10 weed species that are resistant to the triazines or the group 5 herbicides. We have about 10 weed species that are resistant to the group 2 herbicides. And the one that's of greatest concern in the province are glyphosate resistant weeds. The first glyphosate resistant weed was identified in 2008. It was glyphosate resistant giant ragweed. And since then, we have uh, glyphosate resistant mare's tail, common ragweed, and water hemp. You've done some work looking at the critical period of corn when it comes to weed control. Can you define what the critical period is? Yeah, and I think the uh, critical period of weed control in corn is from the day that corn emerges from the soil. And you have to keep your corn clean through the six leaf stage of corn or the V4 stage. And any weeds that emerge after the six leaf stage of corn or V4, uh, they will not impact corn yield. They may cause harvest problems, they may return weed seeds to the soil, but uh, in almost all situations, there's no negative impact on corn yield. If a grower keeps his corn perfectly weed-free from the day of emergence until the six leaf stage, any weeds that come in after that do not impact corn yield. During that time though, how detrimental can weed pressures be? Extremely. And so uh, I think that there's a hidden yield loss that occurs in corn and soybean fields across the U U.S. Midwest and uh, Ontario. And it's all because of delayed post-emergence uh, weed control. In studies conducted in Ontario, where weeds are one inch high at the time of the first post-emergence application, our studies say that there's a two bushel per acre yield loss. So if a farmer waits until the weeds are four inches in height before he puts on his first application of a post herbicide, our data says that there's an eight bushel per acre yield loss. That's a hidden yield loss that occurs across the U.S. Midwest as well as the province of Ontario. A farmer in Ontario could get 195 bushels of uh, corn per acre and he could be really happy with that. The reality is he could have had 205 or 210 bushels per acre and nobody can document what that number is, but it occurs every year across the province of Ontario, and this hidden yield loss is occurring all the time. I hope my numbers are right, but I think in your studies you showed that in the worst possible conditions, weeds could take away three bushels per day of corn yield. Is that accurate? That is correct. In our most competitive environment, if you spray on Tuesday morning versus Monday morning, and you have a, you're relying on a total post-emergence weed control program, you can lose three bushels per acre just by delaying the application by 24 hours. I think most farmers do not appreciate how rapidly corn yield loss occurs. So if you were planning to spray your uh, corn field, let's say on a Monday morning, and you had a rain event on Sunday night and you couldn't spray, and then you had another rain event on Wednesday or Thursday, and let's say that your uh, application was delayed from one Monday to the next, so that's seven, days at three bushels per acre, you're losing 20 bushels per acre. If corn sells for $4 a bushel, you've lost $80 per acre. If you farm 1,000 acres of corn, you've lost $80,000 by spraying one week too late. So the yield losses are just dramatic. So a follow up to close on that. Rain is one thing, but in Nebraska, wind is certainly another huge problem, huge hurdle that growers face when they're trying to spray. What is the advice to making sure that you're spraying to control weed pressures, but also doing it responsibly and not further increasing the problems of resistance? Yep, and uh, so I think that's a really good question. Anytime I do an extension talk in the province of Ontario, I always advise corn and soybean growers to use a two-pass weed control program. 
I think you have to put down your best soil applied herbicide and best is going to be determined by what the weed spectrum is in each individual field. It's going to be dependent on the soil characteristics as well as any future crops that are planned in that rotation. You apply your best soil applied herbicide to protect the full yield potential of the corn during that critical period of weed control. Then if you do have escapes with your soil applied uh, herbicide, then you apply an appropriate post-emergence herbicide to control any weed escapes that occur during that critical period of weed control. So I think all farmers should use a two-pass weed control program and it's strictly for financial reasons. They're gonna maximize net returns on their farm by using two-pass weed control program.